Hi, Tony Mormito here at Insight Partners at booth 2331 in the MJ Biz Show in Vegas. I'm here with my good friend. Kirk Patton. Kurt runs our controls division at Insight Partners, and so we're at the cannabis show. We've got the controls pulled up. We're talking about, you know, cannabis grow room, uh, control and temperature and humidity in the space. So we thought we'd hop on here, just do a quick video, um, talk about what we've learned, what we do, and how you can kind of stay out of trouble as a grower, which we see an awful lot of people getting in trouble, right? So let's start with this. In a typical grow, room, grow facility, we have different rooms, right? You have like a bedroom, you have a mother room, and all these different kind of rooms. What are the typical temperatures we're trying to achieve? What's the most challenging room? Well, the most challenging room is always the grow room. It's at the uh, start of the cycle and then at the end of the cycle to make sure we're holding consistent throughout the process. So plants come in, by the time they leave there, they're ready to harvest, right? Correct. So this is where all the, the action happens. So mm-hmm. it's got to be a very specific temperature and relative humidity, right? Correct, yeah. It has to hold relatively tight. So you want to be as consistent as possible with holding temperature and humidity, both during the day cycle and at the night cycle, which tends to be a little bit more challenging because you lose so much of your heat load in the space to help you control Right, it. right. So let's talk about, let's dissect that for a minute. So grow rooms by their nature, very high in latent load, right? Very Because you've high. got tons of water coming in, the plants yep. are transpiring, is that the right word? Yeah, Yeah. perspiring. Perspiring water all over the place, and uh, you know, you've got a lot of lights, which helps with the sensible load, which is good, but they're not on all the time, right? So when they turn these lights off, this is like one of the lessons we've learned over the many, many uh, hundreds of thousands of square feet of grow rooms we've done, is when they turn the lights off, it's a big challenge, right? So the SHR not only can go to zero, but it can be like negative because the plants are actually cooling the space. Correct. They're starting to cool, so we have to we have to reheat the space. And of course, you not only want to, you know, we could we could throw a ton of electric heaters in there and stuff, but you're trying to be as efficient as possible. So, you know, using the reheat specifically is a huge help for us because we're able to uh, dehumidify the space by running a cold coil. But then again, we're able to keep it warm by using that, you know, by uh, reheat as well. Right, which is you know. As, as Aon reps, we've been Aon reps for a long time. So dehumidification is like in our blood, right? So Correct. we understand to dehumidify the air, you need a cold coil. That's how we dehumidify the air, right? It's got to be colder than the dew point gotta of the air. you got to drop it below the dew point. Yeah. you got to drop it below the dew point. So we wring that moisture out. Well, you can't just blow that 48-degree air into the yeah. space or whatever the temperature is. You've got to reheat it. So having enough reheat, that's a challenge, right? Correct. got to make sure Correct. we do that right. How do it's, we do that sometimes? Well, the, the, the biggest challenge is uh, responding quickly. Right, you, okay. you don't. Anybody can respond and take an hour or two, but it's detrimental to the plants. You want to have a rapid response, so that when lights right. do get turned off, that either we're doing some sort of predictive change to be prepared for it. Okay. If that information is shared with us, if we're not controlling, so you the light. know when they're going into the correct. You have like a 20 minute warning, right? So you can you can adjust some stuff yourself, or more importantly, whenever a system goes out of whack, because heaven forbid somebody shuts down a unit and has to restart. You know, you want to be able to respond quickly to what they're looking for, and that's right. where the delicate balance is. That's where the challenge is, it to is. respond fast. Correct. Now, what happens if you don't hold the right... So let's talk about temperature first. If it gets too hot in the space or too cold or there's high swings, what does that do to the plant? Well, you start to affect its growth, right? And ultimately, okay. if you get too hot, you run the possibility of burning the crop and then the entire crop's useless. Burning the crop. Yeah. Which yeah. means it's... It's useless. It's done. Right. So a typical, like, I think Adam was sharing this with us yesterday, a typical veg room has how many dollars of plants in there? Oh, it's over a million dollars easily. A million dollars. So yeah. the controls are like, you know, you don't, want to, you don't want to lose control of the space, Correct. right? Correct. The entire environment from the from the lighting to the temperature scaling and, and paying attention to it to the control of the HVAC equipment all have to work in unison. And any defect in any sensor starts to affect the system. So you need to be able to recognize that quickly. Quickly and then and then make adjustments. And also, from what I've learned from, from you and the other folks at Insight is that when it comes, the beginning of the grow in the bedroom and the end of the grow are different conditions typically, Correct. right? Correct. So Correct. you gotta be able to respond over the life of the plant and then, not only that, different cultivators, even in the same facility, yep. one guy might want it, I'm throwing some numbers out there, 68, 50%, one guy might want it 65, 50%. There, there are some people that want to run it down all the way to 62, you know, and, and you're right, it'll be the same building, the same same company we're dealing with, but it's cultivator A and cultivator B, and they want different things, and you have to you have to be able to deliver regardless of the conditions. Right. So that if they go, you know, they go in, the cultivators typically go in and just make set point adjustments, right? They change their conditions that they want, and then we have to be able to respond to that. Right, right. And, and a lot of times we might go into a project and there's a certain plan, 
right? Yep. And that plan ends up changing. As they always so do. You, <laughs> they always do. So if you can't change and don't have the flexibility and the control sequencing and the programming, yeah. you're kind of stuck, right? Correct, yeah. So yeah. That, that's one of the things at Insight in our controls group where uh, we do have, let's call it a canned base, right, that has our a rapid. starting point. Yeah, it has our right. rapid responses, but you know, whether we're looking at Florida or Arizona or even like into New Jersey, you know, there are always things that we write custom for those sites because the conditions are slightly different. And so, you know, one of the things we do that, that most don't is we almost write custom programs for each site. And right. as we're going through, you know, it gives that ultra tight control that they're looking for. It minimizes the swings during lights on and lights off. And at the end of the day, I feel like the cultivators, the growers in general, are a lot happier. If they're happier, it drives our business, right? Sure, right. So Yeah, and that's one of the, you know, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but one of the reasons Insight started this controls division is because, you know, we sell a lot of manufacturers products and the standard controllers, if they're just not specifically designed per, almost per facility, right? Correct. Not just pure, Correct. per the uh, niche, but per, per like the facility, facility, then it's hard, it's a struggle to meet the conditions. And it's all about the right conditions at the right time so you can maximize the yield of the plant. Like well, that's what we're yeah, talking about, and, right? Yeah, and at the end of the day, canned programs or, or pre-manufactured programs are good where they fit, right? Right, You know, right. And, and you get similar conditions and similar environments and they work really well. You know, but there's a segment of our market, even, you know, cannabis included, but other areas where there's just not a canned program that fits. Right. right. Um, so it, it does require a lot of, of custom programming. And then, you know, the great thing about custom is if we do run into a glitch, if we do have an issue, whether it's temporary or long term, you know, we have the ability to go in and adjust the program to accommodate. You know, and yeah. that's not something you can do with a canned program. With a canned program, you typically are kind of stuck with what they have. You right. know, and so you're trying right. to trying to fake things out, whereas, you know, we, we do. Everybody has issues. Everybody has sensors fail, and, and, you know, we're able to accommodate. You know, we're able to fix problems, you know, pretty rapidly. That's great. And we, we, enjoy, we enjoy being in that position, too, as Insight Partners, because we want right. to be partners to the... We don't want to sell something and then be done with it. We want to truly right. live with it through the lifetime of the project and the, and the facility. Also, okay, so to summarize, you know, if you're getting into this space and you're a consulting engineer or you're, you're a grower... Make sure you know what you're going to, how you're going to use the rooms, Correct. the temperatures and humidity envelope you're trying to achieve. It's going to be this and the, this extreme one way or the other. Make sure you work with a manufacturer that has the capability to dehumidify and reheat. Correct. And make sure that you have the con a controls partner that can not only build it per facility, but adjust it on the fly. Absolutely. And on the fly is crucial, right? On the fly is crucial. On the fly. Right. And I know I've, multiple times I've said words like quickly and rapid, and, but that's that's important. These environments are just as critical as any pharmaceutical manufacturing, as, as any surgery suite that's relying on their conditions to be right, maintained so that they right. can perform operations. They're just as critical. Serious business. It is. Very serious. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kirk. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for being here. This is great information. And come see us at Booth 2331. And if you want to learn more about what we do for grow rooms, go to our new website, InsightUSA.com. There's a special tab uh, called Grow Room HVAC. And on there, you can set up a 15-minute discovery call with one of our grow room experts, with Kirk, depending on what you're looking for. And we'll be glad to walk you through some of the options and our recommendations on, on, on what you can do to, to have a happier and healthy uh, and successful facility. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kirk. Absolutely. Thank you, Tony. Thanks.